so much for coming. Um, I'm Mary. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Ted Namel. And what we're building is a specialization platform um, for NLP models. And today what I want to talk about is how we can make NLP deployment much, much easier using specialization methods and compression methods. So earlier, Diego gave us a really great explanation of what LLMs are. Um, they're essentially really, really, really big neural networks that know a lot of things. Um, and we can customize those um, for the things that we, we actually care about. And these are really driving the NLP development over the last kind of five years have all been down to these really fantastic foundation models like BERT, T5, GPT. And the benefits of these when building NLP applications are really, really clear. You need a very low data requirement because they're pre-trained on almost every single piece of data on, on the internet. Um, the state-of-the-art accuracy and performance all comes from these foundation models, and they're really easy to build um, into version one applications like Diego told, uh, told us about earlier. However, these foundation models and LLMs come at a cost. They're really, really, really big, um, which makes them very difficult to deploy. Um, you get slow inference, and you need to run them on very expensive hardware, so you get very expensive cloud costs. So they're very expensive to deploy, they're slow, and all of this is really because of the L. They're large. They're, these are really, really large models. And the way that these models work, and the reason they have such good natural language understanding, is because they've seen so much information. And as a side effect, they have huge capabilities. So for example, ChatGPT is able to do tasks as broad as you know, writing plays and um, brainstorming strategy, right? They're able to do such a huge breadth of task. However, as a business or in an application, you actually only need it to do something very, very narrow. Um, and, but when you have it do this very, very narrow thing, the way that you currently uh, deploy it probably, you also pay for the, the effects of it being able to do other things like writing love letters or categorizing, uh, you know, or reviewing contracts when you only need it to, to categorize um, resumes. So what we do with specialization and, and this idea of specialization, which I don't think is particularly well understood, is we take large language models like your BERTs or your GPTs, and we take the parts of that model that are relevant for just your task. So if this uh, blue thing is my whole foundation model, um, in that there's only a really, really small amount of that that's actually relevant for the task. Um, and this is how you're able to build a much, much smaller model, which is equally as accurate, which is much, much easier to deploy. Now, these models are just far better from a ML ops point of view. Um, it's much cheaper deployment. They're much easier um, to get really, really fast inference from. Um, but also you actually get very good quality models. So a lot of the state-of-the-art benchmarks in very specific tasks are held by these specialized models, um, not the really, really big um, models that we see coming out of places like OpenAI. So here's a, uh, a, a quick illustration of, of what this process might look like and, and how this works. So here we have a graph of um, like your accuracy and your size trade-off. And this trade-off is always going to exist. Now, currently, your options are what's available open source. So you might have your original model, which might be a very big BERT, maybe a 1 billion parameter BERT. And then you'll have open source checkpoints along the way. So I think this one we've, we've pointed out here is maybe a, a BERT base or a still BERT. But what we're able to do with specialization is from the original model, specialize it and make it much, much, much smaller um, and give these what we call uh, specialized models along the top. And then you get here this Pareto front of models, which are much smaller, but don't have this huge accuracy decrease that we see when moving from the open source large models to the open source more resource efficient models. Um, and you're able to get a better accuracy latency or size trade-off than you would have been able to previously. So I'll, uh, since we don't have very much time, I'll, I'll whiz through and, and talk very quickly about the kinds of results that you can see with specialization. So on the left, um, you can see 
the the graph of latency and model size. So when we move from BERT larges all the way to the Titan BERT, uh, the Titan variants, which are much much smaller, so on the order of like hundred x smaller. Um, but then we compare that with the accuracy that we see from these models, and they beat um, BERT based and distilled BERT fine tuned on most of the natural language understanding um, tasks. So you're able to get models which are, you know, between ten and hundred x smaller. Um, while actually sometimes improving the accuracy on, on benchmarks, which is really impressive. And obviously, because they're smaller, they're much, much, much easier to deploy. So uh, this process of specialization is very difficult. And the way that it's done currently is individual ML engineers will do one-off tasks, uh, one-off projects to specialize their models. They might do a combination of pruning and quantization or graph compilation and neural architecture search. Um, but the issue is this is a very expensive and long experimentation process, which quite often fails. Um, so what the Titan ML platform does is it wraps um, all of these techniques up in, into defined pipelines um, where you can put in your model, your fine tuning data set, and the Titan platform will automatically specialize it for you and create that model that is 10 to 100 times um, faster and cheaper and therefore much, much, much easier to deploy. So I'll finish off uh, with a very quick case study of, of uh, what we did with a um, early client of ours. So what they were building um, was in a, uh, uh, it was the original was an electrotype model and they were doing document classifications. Um, and the problem that they were struggling with was they weren't able to get the latency that they required um, on sensible hardware. The only way that they could get the latency was on using two A100s, which for inference is pretty silly. Um, they'd already tried standard things like Onyx runtime and quantization. Um, but what we did is we, we took that same original model and put it through our, our specialization pipeline and compression pipeline and ended up with a model which had still very, very good accuracy, but could be deployed on a single T4 um, with the same latency. And that's a bit of a game changer when it comes to the challenges and getting these models to production and getting them uh, running at sensible latency and, and at sensible costs. So the, uh, the TLDR is large language models are very, very, very big. Um, but for most use cases, they really don't need to be that big when you're dealing with one specific use case. Um, and turning those large language models into much smaller specialized models um, means you have much a much easier time uh, getting to deployment and getting the latency and memory constraints that you might have as a business. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, MLOps guys for organizing this. Um, you can reach me, my email's down there or LinkedIn me um, and let me know if you have any questions in the chat. I'll be happy to, to stick around and answer any later. Thank you so much, Miriam. This was awesome. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much.